Attends, je vais faire mon tour en français aujourd'hui. What? What did you say? No, I will do my best English. Huh? So, hello everybody. Bonjour again. Uh, and uh, welcome, uh, first of all, in Germany, I should say guten tag huh, today. Guten yeah? Tag. Or guten morgen, huh? because we are in Germany. This is a little town of Kiel. Yeah? And uh, we are not staying in Germany today. We are going to my city, my home city, my town. It is Strasbourg. Yeah, not Salzburg. Huh? This is in Austria, <laughs> Strasbourg. Yeah, and Strasbourg is on the other side of the River Rhine. So it is in France. France. <laughs> voilà. So we are going uh, to go to France today, and I will uh, show you a little bit uh, the city where I was born. I raised up. I grew up. I had my studium. I was traveling a lot uh, in 72 countries around the world. But I always uh, decided to come back because it is quite nice to live there. And my name is Patricia. Patricia. Pat or Patty? Yeah, is that okay? Do we have Patties on board? Tricia's? Hello. Oh, two today. Hello, three. My God. <laughs> I feel very unique there. <laughs> okay, so Patricia, this is my name. I am a guide, of course, but I am also, first of all, an insider of that city. And um, I don't conceive the tour like a guide, you know, with an umbrella. I hope that it will be nice for you. I hope that you will see it a little bit this overview I will try to give you, yeah? Because we have a few hours for that. And of course, uh, 2,000 years in a few hours will be a little bit more information than necessary. But I will try my best, okay? We have also our bus driver, Georges. Bonjour. Hello. <laughs> Uh, he cannot uh, speak to you uh, because he has to see hear a lot of things happen. Look, you have four bridges over the Rhine. Can you see? Left hand side, you have a beautiful bridge called Mimram. It was built up 2004. This one is called the European Bridge, Europe Bridge. The other one, the right hand side one, will be a brand new bridge. It is not finished yet, did you see? Yeah. Now we have the rails going over for the trams. And we have uh, the last one right hand side, the blue one, is the railway bridge. And if you have a look now, say smiley to the policeman. <laughs> France, right hand side, you have the city of Strasbourg. Bonjour la police. <laughs> and uh, we will now, everything is different. Wow. The sunshine. <laughs> the flowers. Did you see the flowers? Yeah. Uh, Strasbourg is quite a beautiful city. It is a city which has a lot of flourishing, you know, really uh, rose bushes, geranium flowers. You will see the bridges also. We have full baskets of flowers, and it makes, uh, of course, a nice atmosphere. Voila, so we are in France, in Strasbourg. The first buildings you will see is, of course, not the old city. Huh? The first building is here. Uh, first of all, you see in front of you the one which is not finished yet, huh? just in front of you. This will be a hospital, and I mention it because it is quite lovely uh, to be mentioned, I would say. It is because we had three religious communities who built it together. And you know, this is to be mentioned today, I would say. Uh, we have the Jewish community, uh, we have the, the Protestant uh, community, and we have the Catholic community. And they decided to make a hospital together, and this will be open next year in 2017. Yeah, so it's not bad, I would say. Uh, it is a new project. You can see that we have a lot of construction which are new here, brand new, yet not finished because we build up a new district of that city. Uh, it was in the past a little bit difficult with Germany, you know, I say a little bit, but it was much more difficult, yeah? My grandparents changed hands all the time, so it was a security here between the city and Kiel and the Rhine River. Today it has not anymore uh, a problem, so we build up and we have more than 30,000 people are expected in the next two years to come to Strasbourg. It's a very dynamic city. Uh, we have now a half million inhabitants, uh, about 480,000. So we will have 
about half million in mm. just two years. And inside the city center, we have about 280,000. Uh, so 480 for the connection, uh, the urban connection, and 280,000 for the city of Strasbourg. Uh, just to give you, I don't make a quiz, uh, don't worry. <laughs> but it's just to give you an order of idea of the size. It is a bicultural city. Uh, you will see a lot of aspects huh, which are linked with Germany and France. And it makes it totally interesting. Because, you know, we are a little bit German and a little bit Latin. <laughs> it's a nice combination. We live like the French. We uh, work like the Germans. <laughs> And well, it is really like that huh? in the architecture, in the food, you know, in the way of life, we have both aspects. So my name will give you a lot of indication. I told you Patricia, yeah? Mm -hmm. But my family name is Schnitzler. Oh, this is not typically French, <laughs> no. This is German, but I am not German. I never been have been German, yeah? But my grandparents, you know, they were born in a time where this region here, where you are of France, which is called Alsace, uh, this region was annexed to Germany. Uh, it was, you know, we had 1870, 1871, we had a, a war, it was the Franco-Prussian War. You know, Bismarck, well, maybe, uh, uh, Wilhelm, Kaiser Wilhelm, yeah, and they wanted to make the, the reunion, the unification of uh, uh, Germany, and they annexed, because Napoleon III lost the war, they annexed uh, Alsace-Lorraine. I'm sure it rings a bell, yeah, Alsace-Lorraine. And so this was the time where my grandma was born, and so she got a German name. Huh? She was just born before the First World War ended. And so at the First World War ending, do you know what happened? Who was the winner? Huh? France. So Alsace and Lorraine became French, French so again. <laughs> and that makes it, of course, back force, back force, six times between 1870 and 1944. Can you imagine? So my grandparents were totally French, German, German, French. And I remember very well my grandma telling me, Patricia, I don't feel French, I don't feel German, I am Alsatian. Alsace, the name of this region, they had an identity, you know, they had a dialect, which is also a funny mixture between two languages. <laughs> if I tell you bonjour, you know, in my dialect, in Alsatian dialect, it would be very funny for you. I will mix up the French and the German. I will say to you, listen, salut, bisomme. <laughs> Can you see? Salut, yeah. the French, yeah? Salut. Bisomme is the Alsatian or the Alemannic word to say hello everybody. So if I mix up the salut and the everybody, salut bisomme, I have two languages in one and this is Alsatian. Do you know how to say thanks a lot in French? Mm -hmm. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, merci beaucoup. And do you, uh, do you know in German? Danke vielmals or danke schön. So if I mix it up again, I say, listen, merci vielmals. <laughs> so this is really, you know, the two cultures that we have. Yeah? And so Alsace, the, the north east end of France. Huh? You know, the nose on the other side is Normandy and Bretagne. Do we have Great Britain people on board? Yeah, also, you know. <laughs> and on the other side, you have the northeast end of France, so Alsace. And in the middle, you have Paris, Champagne, Lorraine, the Vosges Mountains, and of course, Alsace. Yeah? So what you see here, uh, uh, these dogs everywhere, did you see them? Mm -hmm. This is a part of the harbor of Strasbourg. Uh, we have a big harbor on the Rhine River, and it is called Le Port Nom de Strasbourg, and it is a 15 mile wide port. So it is the second one on the River Rhine. Yeah? So we have a lot of employees, you know, in this harbor. It is really a big part of the employment. And we have 12,000 people <laughs> working in the harbor. Look at the beautiful flowers left. Did you see? Mm -hmm. Voilà, so 
also gentlemen for you also i mentioned uh, the left hand side barracks uh, can you read the foreign, name foreign legion. yes foreign legion this is the best travel agent for you <laughs> you know why they send you away in the jungles you know very big adventures it is also a very good hairdresser <laughs> yeah they give you a short haircut huh? <laughs> Well, so of course, in the past, we had a lot of uh, military barracks here uh, because it was just facing the Rhine River, which was going up to here, but it was canalized, you know, in the 19th century. And so now, what you can see on the right-hand side is, of course, uh, well, I would say, uh, all the industrial uh, uh, harbor of Strasbourg. Some people are living on their boats. Can you see the boats here, the houseboats? Uh, did you come from, no, you go to Amsterdam, right? right. You, yeah, yes. so you will see a lot to, in Amsterdam, yeah, also. It's a nice thing because they don't have to pay for residential taxes or they are on the ground level uh, that you have to pay, not on the, on, the, on the water levels. But these people here left, did you see the beautiful houses? Mm -hmm. So these houses are, of course, uh, houses of the residential center and we have a lot of embassies, a lot of uh, consulates here. How many? Uh, About 70 different countries. Can you imagine? 17 different, 70, sorry, different countries are represented in Strasbourg. Yeah? And institutions here, yeah? the headquarters, and that makes uh, Strasbourg uh, totally interesting, you know, because we have a sort of cosmopolite flair. Huh? We have people coming from all over the world here. You are here, <laughs> they are here, <laughs> and uh, we have 12 million visitors each year. Can you imagine? Because it is a UNESCO site, it is a beautiful city inside, you will see that a little bit later on. So here, it is not a mosque, huh? that is just on the construction, it is the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, this will be a Russian Orthodox Church. Uh -huh. We have, uh, you know, the Cathedral, La Cathedral Notre Dame, which is Roman Catholic, huh? because 70% of the population is Roman Catholic. We have also the 20% Lutheran and Calvinists, uh, Protestants. We have a Jewish community, a quite big one. We have a little Russian Orthodox community, and we have Muslims, of course, so we have also a mosque in Strasbourg. Yeah? So, look, uh, here it is also a green city. This is also very nice. It is a, a, a quite clean city, you will see that. Uh, we will also have a safe city, not so much problems, huh? troubles. Uh, we have some beggars sometimes, but it is not a criminal city, I would say, you know. And uh, look, uh, this is a park uh, just in front of you. It is called the Orangerie Park. Uh, and it is our leisurely uh, loved park. Everybody knows about that. Huh? Because everybody, when you are a child, when you have parents, so you come for a walk, you know. And it is a beautiful park inside. It is called an English garden uh, because it was a uh, nature. Hmm? It is a, a natural park, and you will see also in a few moments, you will see at the right hand side something special, which is called the Josephine Pavilion. Do you know Napoleon? Yeah. The, the small man, the yeah. big emperor? Yeah. <laughs> so he had a wife, one of them was Josephine de Beauharnais. And if you have a look just now, right now, you can see just inside the park, uh, the pavilion of Josephine, mm -hmm. when she was not in Paris, because she was living in Paris, of course, but sometimes uh, she had residences all over the country. She was a pretty woman, a uh, pretty woman. <laughs> she was very nice, very lovely. And so she had a pavilion also over here, but she didn't live so much here because it was outside of all the life. Uh, so she lived in the Rowan Castle that you will see later on, yeah? So, um, hello everybody. Do you want to know a secret? Yes. A secret how we make the babies here. Ooh la la. <laughs> yes, because we have a special way to do the babies here. 
Ah, I hope you know that. Yes, of course. We have the storks doing that for yeah. us, yeah? <laughs> and if you have a look, ladies and gentlemen, to the trees that you will have now when we uh, just are in that street, I am speaking about the trees left hand side of the road. I don't know if you see that, but the people left hand side, I am sure you can see sometimes the nests that are very big inside and we have in all the nest little storks at that moment. Uh, I don't know if it is so good to be seen because of course in the bus it is not so easy but try just to catch a little bit. There's one. Do you know, do you see one? Oh yes, on the chimney. I saw one on the chimney. Oh yeah, look, 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 in front of you, in front of you, I don't know if everybody can see, but in front of you you have two storks in the tree. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's one. Uh, hey, look, they are just now trying to fly. These are the little ones trying to fly away way now first first flight for them you see they have a beak which is quite gray and these are the small one they were born in May and they try to fly away now first time out of the nest look at that left hand side just now he tries to fly and the mom is just behind because she has a red beak and she's overlooking that can you see that I, I'm not sure that everybody uh, catch it but uh, well it's very nice oh yes they are also they try to fly away because now it is the time where they do the first you know nest living yeah and so it is quite nice to observe it left hand side we have more than 40 nests ladies and gentlemen so we had in that look this one is also trying to fly away left hand side here and on the top of the on the top of the roof left you have one stork also can you see uh -huh. and also at the top of the roof left hand side can you see there is another one with a nest oh my god did you see how many we have here uh, I tried to catch them on the right hand side yes there are also some I saw them so we had ladies and gentlemen in that street and in that park we had this year we counted you know 50 nests and so in all these nests ladies and gentlemen we have three to four little storks can you imagine left also you can see oh yes this one is flying also it tried to fly look at that yeah it's so nice I, I we cannot stop i'm sorry because it's a road but uh, we try to There's slow down one. there is another one a big nest four of them there are four of them inside and at the left hand side on the top of the room i haven't seen a single one Take care. Uh, I'm not sure that now we have. Yeah, uh, in that one nest we have. Oh, can you see them. one? Oh, he's just flying away. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you see? I saw that flying away, but I haven't seen a nest. <laughs> you see? Here. The nest. Oh, the can you see? Oh my god, it's cute. And oh, here, look here. also babies always inside the nest. And so this is something really special because I don't know another spot where you have so many nests. Do they mark them? Uh, yes, they put yes, a, a um, on yes. Them? Um, not the, the white one, but the one we the have the, the the babies. The yeah. The babies. I will tell you. I will try to tell you because we have, you know, the stork where these appearing from Alsace. We didn't have so much a few years ago, and we try to make something, you know, to have them back in Alsace. And so we uh, capture you know the the old ones to to let them stay here so that they can lose the instinct of migration because it is a migration bird yeah he comes end of March on uh, beginning of um, yeah no beginning of March I would say and he leaves Alsace at the end of September he goes back to uh, Spain north of Africa and he comes back next springtime on the birth spot so if we have some birds like the one you see here, mm -hmm. uh, we will have a lot of storks next year because as much as you have, they come back to where they were born. Yeah? Yeah. So this is what we do. We have a range production park where we try to give them a little bit food, not so much because they don't have to lose the instinct to search the food. And so it works very well. <laughs> a lot of babies. huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> so why is it so important to have stores? Not only for the babies, because it is also a migration symbol. And if you have a look to the left hand side now, look, we have the Council of Europe. Did you see the flags? Yes. Did you see? We have 47 members. I am not speaking about the parliament. Uh, the parliament is something special, but this is the Council of Europe. This is the Democratic Union of Europe, the one created 1949. You know, it was just four years after the, uh, the, the war was uh, stopping, and it was the first time that the old geographic continent of Europe was united. So you can imagine, it is very important. There are 800 million inhabitants in Europe, and they have the representation here. I just was at a session of the of the parliament here, and you know that was very important, very interesting, because they were speaking about culture and education to facing the problem of um, well racism, you know, uh, the problem of uh, intolerances, etc. And so it was very important. They are the the defender. Of of the human rights really because we have also here if you have a look to the left can you see there is another building coming out mm -hmm. and this building here just facing us now well, on the other side of the bridge is what we call the European Court for Human Rights and if you are a citizen of Europe and if you are blessed in your human rights you can try of course in your own country to um, claim against a state but it will be difficult yeah and so if it is not possible you can come to Strasbourg it is the only court for individual citizens uh, to claim a uh, human right pleasures so a commission will decide if the case is relevant and if it is we have chambers two chambers a small one big one and international judges and they will have to judge if you feel blessed in your human rights if you are right yeah so it is something very important. <laughs> I can tell you uh, a lot of problems. They got 3,000 demands a day, each judge. Yeah, oh so you gosh. can just imagine the, the paper facing, yeah? And it is uh, something quite amazing what they do, yeah? I uh, can maybe just... Uh, Oh yeah, we have also a lot of pupils. Now look how the storks were active. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very active. Oh la 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 la, what is that? So this is all the kids coming in. I didn't see. Yeah, they are visiting, you know, the European institutions. Because here, left hand side, you will have the court and uh, the parliament, which is coming out. Uh, so we call that the European district. Yeah? Can you tell me what you saw? Huh? Yeah. It was done by a British architect, maybe you know him, uh, Richard Rogers. Yeah? And Richard Rogers was making in Paris also a lot of things. Uh, Maison de l'ORTF, the Centre Pompidou. He yeah. was winning prize awards. Uh, uh. So he did it like a ship because he wanted to symbolize that the ship has found harbor in Strasbourg. Uh, nice symbol because the ship harbor on the crossroads. Uh, that was the meat. Oh, la, la, look at all the kids. <laughs> what is that? So you can see also coming out now uh, left hand side uh, the Parliament of Europe. Uh, we had uh, our friends of Great Britain going out of the Parliament of Europe. <laughs> and it was the first time since creation that somebody went out. Uh, so we have now 27 members. We had 28 just a few days ago. <laughs> and um, we have here all the session of the Parliament. Uh, so the the laws are made here, that they discuss about a lot of things. So you can see the flags over there. Do you know the, the European flag? Uh, the first yeah. one you can see, the blue one with a circle of stars, is the European flag. Yeah? So it is a very nice symbol because it symbolizes uh, the hope of the people uh, of better future. You know, the blue sky uh, symbolizing better future. And you have a sort of circle of harmony, uh, people living peacefully together. And you have 12 stars on it, which has nothing to do with the number of, uh, of uh, countries, 
it is a symbol for perfection. Yeah? So you can see the tower at the left hand side, uh, which is called the unfinished tower, uh, because Europe is still under construction. It is the one where you have the offices for the deputies. And can you see the crane just behind and a sort of dome, which is now just on the restoration? This is the plenar session room. You know, it's a big assembly room where all the deputies, 751 deputies, sit, you know, and they talk about law <coughs> in Europe. They speak, do you know that? Only, only time in them, in very specific, you know, they can have their native language, yeah? Voila, so 28 countries, 751 deputies, 24 languages, 19... Uh, uh, countries which has the euro, uh, the, the money, the euro, the same currency, yeah? And so this is what happens today in Strasbourg, but also in Brussels, uh, uh, because of course we have also Luxembourg, which is involved in that. Huh? Okay, everybody, still with me? Yeah. <laughs> So the European creation was, of course, uh, facing the history because 1949, it was just the Second World War ended, just uh, five years or four years uh, before. And Winston Churchill was a visionary and he made also a lot of uh, talks in Zurich, in London, and also Robert Schumann, Konrad Adenauer, General de Gaulle, they made this construction, which was the first time in history, which is quite I would say new, uh, 60 years history. So you will maybe ask me or you will ask yourself why in Strasbourg? Huh? Why not somewhere else? Because Strasbourg is, and that was said by them, the best reconciliation symbol between Germany and France, you know, uh, because we were always moving back and forth because of the war time. And so the reconciliation was the beginning of the European construction. So Strasbourg was chosen as non head town of a uh, country to be the representation for this new created European Union. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is why today Strasbourg is the European city. Huh? And it is like in New York or like in Geneva. Huh? Uh, these are cities which are not, I would say, the head town for the countries, but which have these international institutions. Yeah? Yeah. Well, five minutes to speak about Europe, huh? Woo! <laughs> Do you know, by the way, the anthem of Europe? Yeah. The song? Yeah, it's a drawing. Ah, thank you, sir. I'm sure you know. Sorry if it rains. I'm not a singer, I'm a guide. But it is just, you know, this is a, a very nice symbol, order to Joyce, yeah? Uh, so it is, of course, the one adopted. Uh, by the way, do you know the French one? So this is the Marseillaise. And you know why I mention it here? No, you don't know, of course, because it was created in Strasbourg. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> so, yes, it was created here. It was called after Marseille because Marseille soldiers, you know, in that war time after the revolution, the priest de la Bastille, it was three years after that, it was the 26th April 1792, you had the Marseillaise created here in Strasbourg. It was not called first Marseillaise, huh? it was the war song for the Rhine army and it was adopted by Marseille volunteer soldiers singing this song in entering Paris and this is why it was called after a while La Marseillaise but it was indeed created composed in Strasbourg so now if you have an aperitif with your friend you can see Patricia my guide in Strasbourg told me that the Marseillaise was created here and that is true yeah <laughs> I say only the trust, of course. Voila, ça va, everybody? Yeah, still with me? Yeah. Good. 
So, you see, this is a, a part of our history, huh, which was, of course, the actual history, the contemporaneous history. We were in the northern part of Strasbourg with the European institutions. Uh, if you have a look to the left, you will see the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if you're listening to me, of course. <laughs> it is the Arte Tower. You know, Arte is a, um, how would you say, a broadcasting a mm -hmm. network, TV. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think in England, you have it all, in Great Britain also, uh, you can with a special uh, antenna because it is a very good one. It is really a high level of culture and it is a German and French cooperation. This is why it is based in Strasbourg. But they broadcast all over Europe in the own language of the country. So it is a technical innovation that they made and they, when they began to broadcast, and it is a very nice high-level culture. No advertising, yes. No interruption movies with advertising and big journalism, really good journalism. Yeah? Did you see the trams? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Look, when they open the door, did you see? Oh, they will open the door. They are floor level, ground level. Can you see? No steps climbing in and out, yeah? So this is, it has been done for the handicapped people, 1994, uh, so a few years ago. And we were the first city in France to do the trams like that. All the others had steps to climb in, and now, of course, we are copied everywhere. But it is a very good situation for elder people, handicapped people, mother and child, you know, to go by tram to Strasbourg, because Strasbourg is a green city. We have a lot of bicycles, a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> so we have also a lot of trams lines, yeah? Oh, I speak a lot, huh? so do you have questions? Yes, I do. Yeah, Strasbourg is today, I would say, really an uh, open, open world. Look, the geographic position of us, you know, is in the Rhine Valley. And you are traveling on the Rhine Valley. If I consider the bus like the Rhine Valley, look in the middle, I have the Rhine River. The east side would be, of course, the German side with the Black Forest ending right. So the north, east, west, south roads were strategically positioned. Strasbourg was created by the Romans. Yeah? So it developed uh, into the city you see today. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So the Romans, they settled 12 BC. Uh, before Christ was, you know my job, huh? two hours to tell you 2,000 years. Huh? <laughs> and this uh, little military camp of the Roman time uh, went out, you know, in a city in the Middle Ages. And this city was a trade city. And it was belonging to the Holy Roman Empire of German nations. It was not holy and not Roman, but it was <laughs> the Holy Roman Empire. And it was a trade city. And we became French again after the 30 years war you know louis 14 uh, it was after the reformation they made princes of europe uh, catholic against protestant and they made wars you know and so we became pro um, we became sorry french again 1648 yeah after the treaty of westphalia can you see left this is also, uh, we are speaking about religion. So this is the Jewish uh, community, of course. It is the synagogue. And uh, you can see the David star. And on the side, you will see the wall facing us when we are a little bit later. Uh, it is the menorah, uh, the chandelier, with the six branches of the Jewish community. So the big, this is the second biggest uh, size uh, the synagogue in France. Because we have about, uh, let's say, we don't know exactly, uh, because in France it is forbidden to ask and to put on an official paper your religion, because it is to save the intimacy of the people. So about 17,000 people, uh, Jewish community. They were present since the Middle Ages. Huh? Uh, of course, in wartime we didn't have, because uh, they were safer in other, <laughs> and they came back after the war times. Do you see the beautiful buildings now? Mm -hmm. Did you see that we changed century with them? In the architecture, you can see that we were in the extension of the city. So we were first in the 21st century, huh? because the new buildings are belonging to our